All right, how's it going everyone? My name is Giovanni. Welcome back to another video. Today we are finally gonna get into the wiring harness on our Gen 3 LS engine. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be going over every component on the engine, removing the harness from it, and then we have a new harness that we're gonna be putting on it. So we're gonna go through that process, but I think I'd like to explain some of the wires, sensors, and all that, so that way you guys know how to do it. If you're gonna be removing a harness, I'm gonna show you guys the best, most effective way to do it without cutting any wires. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so before we dive right into it, for those of you that are new to the channel, or maybe you forgot, this is a 99, Vortec 5.3 I pulled out of a 99 Silverado and currently it's inside of my 1981 C20 pickup that we've been working on. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I have a glove on my left hand because I cut a good portion of my finger off not too long ago. So that's just to protect my hand on this side. The only tools we're really gonna need is going to be a flathead screwdriver or some kind of pick device that's gonna really help you get the actual plugs off. You may need, you know, various sockets and stuff for some of the ones, some of the harness that's bolted to the engine, but that's really all it's gonna be. And so we're gonna go ahead and start off here at the throttle body and I'm gonna do my best to name all of these correctly, but I'm doing this off the top of my head. So, you know, if I, I name one wrong, oh well. But so this is our IAC connector and this is going to be a good example of what the rest of the plugs are going to be so as you can see there is just a tab you pull up on the tab and then pull back on the plug and it just slides right out so that's our first one second one is down here this is the actual throttle throttle body connector that one's gonna same philosophy just boom this is our alternator alternator same thing there you go and then this is our evap purge solenoid this uh, solenoid is going to end up getting blocked off anyway but we're going to remove the harness while we're here okay so that was four up in the front of the engine as you can see the engine harness goes on top of the intake and then it splits off into two so we'll work on the left side of it all right so normally at the back of the intake there would be your map sensor unfortunately mine broke off when i was installing the engine so we're going to unplug this anyway and then you know i'll have to replace this i probably will end up just changing out the whole intake because there's not a good way to get this back on there it broke off completely so moving on on the left side of the intake we're going to follow this one down this one may already be partially unplugged and then if we follow that down it would go down to our o2 sensors which those ones are a four pin square plug that look like this. And this one, uh, I don't exactly remember where this one went. So we'll, you know, we'll figure that out. Again, this engine's already been moved into a new vehicle. So some of this stuff has already been unplugged, but you know, I figured I'd just go through it with you guys. All right, and then if we move to the other side of the harness, this is going to be our ignition harness from here to there. We're gonna start off by unplugging this big, white one in the middle this is going to be our main ignition on this side this one has a little blue lock on it so you're going to pull the lock out like this and then same philosophy grab on the tab here and then pull up once it's off there you go we're also going to take off the four coil pack connectors one two three and four most of these should come off with their hands if if it does feel a little bit stuck you can grab a flathead screwdriver and just pry up on this thing chances are you're going to end up breaking a few of these so it's no real big deal they stay in there pretty well without the lock on them but you know try not to break any especially if you're going to be reworking the harness next up we have our fuel injector harnesses these ones are a little bit more complicated I'll go ahead and edit in what kind of injector style this is because I don't remember off the top of my head. It might be Moltec plugs. But the way that these ones work is you're gonna pull up on this gray piece right here. Okay, that's like a lock. And then if you look closely right where my screwdriver is touching, that is the actual locking tab. So we're gonna push that in and then pull up. I may need to use two hands for this one, but general idea is just to pinch on that or push in that and then pull up on the plug itself. Okay, and then we're just gonna do that for the other three. So again, we're gonna lift up on the gray part, push in on the tab, and then just kind of pull, wiggle, pull. Sometimes they can be pretty 
hard to do, but just keep trying. And sometimes you'll just end up pulling the gray thing out like I just did. No problem. Just leave it on the harness. We'll put it back in later. There you go. Actually, it's sometimes easier if you pull out the gray thing entirely. All right, and then as we're working through the harness, you're gonna see a lot of these little gray clip connectors. These are what hold the harness onto the engine at various points. The best way to remove these is either to just snip them off or grab a pair of pliers and put them underneath it and just kind of pry up. Chances are it's gonna break, but there you go. It's just like a little Christmas tree. Those aren't really important. You can buy new ones or you really just don't need them. Here's another one. I'm gonna pull up on the gray connector. Push in the tab. Again, gray piece came off. That's fine. I'm just gonna grab it from the white base. And there you go. Then we have another one of those little harness holders. So I'm just gonna pull that out. This one might break off, but that's okay. Okay, yeah, that one broke, but that's fine. All right, so again, I'm gonna pull up on the gray piece. This one is pretty hard to get to sometimes, so just push in on that black piece. Okay, gray piece came out. This one is always a pain to get to. All right, so since this one's being pretty stubborn, I'm gonna grab this long pair of pliers, try to squeeze that connector, and there it goes. All right, and then the last connector on the left side of the upper engine is going to be this ground. So it's going to be this ground right here. I believe it's a 13 millimeter. So we're just going to unscrew that, take the ground off, and then move on to the right side. All right, so another thing I like to do as I'm working on the harness is going through and then disconnecting the actual physical harness from the engine. So up in front of the intake, there's this 10 mil right here. Let's do that. And then this big chunk will come off. This harness right here that's going to the back will still be tight because the transmission is still plugged in. All right, and then on the right side of the engine, we're gonna have our alternator kind of main power feed right here. It's two 10 mils. And then that will free up the harness a little bit more as well. All right, now on the right side, it's gonna be pretty much identical to the left. You're gonna have your four injector harnesses and then your four coil pack harnesses and the big ignition harness right in the middle. And then you have your injector harnesses, which are even harder to do on this side because they're all facing the wrong direction. So, okay, as I was doing that, I kind of remembered something. <laughs> uh, you don't actually have to unplug these guys. These guys are connected to this main ignition harness right here. So you don't have to actually disconnect these. And actually, I recommend if you did, you plug them back in. Because when you try to fire this, you'll realize that you have no ignition coils plugged in. So you only ever need to unplug those if you're changing the actual coil packs themselves. So now we've got that side of the harness off. And so this is what you should have. You should have this kind of big clump of harness there. I'm going to go ahead and take off this clamp right here, which holds it onto that coil pack there. These big black ones usually always break. Okay. So now that's off and you can see we can move the harness a lot more now. So if you're following the harness, you do see that this one does go underneath. This one down here is usually like the hardest to get to if you're pulling it from a stock vehicle. It goes right underneath the oil pan. So it's sometimes pretty hard to get the hold of down there. But uh, we'll go take care of that one now. And then all we have left is the back of the engine, which would be the transmission and O2 sensors. All right, so now we're down looking at the front of the engine down below. You can see... This is where the harness is coming in at and it's got this plastic kind of cover that wraps all the way around the oil pan. On the right side, you're gonna see this bolt. It's a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and take that off. That's gonna free up most of the harness to get out of there. This is gonna be like the dirtiest section of the engine, pretty much. And then on the left side here, 
you can see this little notch if you just pull the harness to your right so this way it will just pop out and come out on this side of the harness this is either a ground or a starter connector i can't 100 percent remember but you do have this lug right here can't for the life of me remember where it goes on the engine i'll look up a schematic or something and try to put that in here if i remember we also have these guys which are the ac compressor those go to the back of the ac compressor and then the rest of this harness goes to the starter itself so we'll go on that side and disconnect the starter all right so this is the starter you can actually pop off this cover here it's like a little heat shield for the starter solenoid you could take that off so you can see better. But uh, on top of the starter, we just have one plug. And what we're focused on right now is getting off this lug right here, which is our starter switch wire. That's gonna be, I believe it's a purple wire. That's gonna be the one that actually sends the signal to, to the starter. So I believe that one is a eight millimeter. So let me go grab that and then we'll take that one off. And then there is one more plug here that we need to take off as well. All right, and then if you take a look to right behind the starter solenoid, you'll see another plug back there. I honestly can't remember what this one is. I'll look it up and put it right here. But this one is a little bit hard to get to, but not terrible. There you go. I believe that's the crank position sensor, now that I think about it. That one's out. And then if we look at our harness, you can see that there's just one more left. And it's going to be really hard to show you guys this one, but it is right here underneath the starter if you look at the oil pan from underneath you'll be able to see it really clearly it is the oil level sensor basically it just tells you if your engine is low on oil so when you get the low engine oil light that's what this one is i'm actually going to go down underneath and show you guys that because this one is a little bit different on how it comes out all right so i'm underneath the truck you can see this one is a little bit weird on how it disconnects it's the same philosophy as all of them but it's got this weird little cover on it so you pry up on the clip and then it just comes out the worst case is you can break that little little guard right there but that's all of the connectors on this side of the engine now i'm underneath the truck uh looking at the driver's side of the transmission on this particular transmission this is a 4l60e um, there's going to be two sensors right here these ones just unclip just like everything else has and that one right there same thing that one's a little tight there we go and then all we have to do now is there is a harness bracket right here on top of the transmission i believe it's another 10 millimeter we're going to unbolt that and then go over to the other side of the transmission where there is a tss sensor and the main transmission harness all right and then up ahead if you look up there you might be able to see it uh, is one of our favorite little gray connectors this one I think is probably the worst one on the whole engine. It's in a really tough spot to get. So that one I recommend just grabbing a pair of snips and cutting it off. So we'll go ahead and take that off and then we'll go to the other side of the transmission and take off everything else. While we're down here, they're already disconnected, but the O2 sensor harnesses are right here. Uh, there should be two, one pre-cat, one post-cat. So go ahead and disconnect those while you're on this side. All right, now we're on the passenger side of the transmission. There is this uh, metal cover here. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off so you guys can see a little bit better. Most of the time you don't have to take this off, but let me just take this off real fast so I can show you guys what it looks like. So this big plug here, this is your main transmission plug. And then at the very back at the tail shaft of the transmission, there is your TSS connector. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to jack up the transmission, I think, because mine is right behind this bracket or this is a aftermarket cross member yeah it's it's just right there so go ahead and take that one off as well so on the transmission plug you see this big arrow right here don't worry that doesn't actually mean anything for what we're doing on the left and the right of the big arrow you're gonna go ahead and grab the plug and squeeze firmly and you should just feel it pop up and then you just go ahead and pull it up and out of the way it's not that hard the arrow basically lines back up with this little notch right here so that way you know how to put it back on all right and then so now i'm going to go ahead and jack up my transmission so i can get that tss connector off and then we'll move back up to the top of the engine because i believe i forgot something quick note i forgot to mention it while you're down on the passenger side of the transmission you're going to want to disconnect your o2 sensors again one pre-cat one post-cat all right and now we're sitting on top of the engine so there is three connectors back here this one right here the tall one this is your oil pressure sensor 
right to the left of it, if you're looking down on it, is your cam position sensor. That one just lifts off as well. And then there is a ground lug, just like on the other side. But that one is right here. That one is a ground lug and I believe it's on one of the 15 millimeter bolts on the back of the engine. So go ahead and take that one off. And then one thing I think we missed because mine was already disconnected, there should be a blue plug like this sitting on top. Just go ahead and disconnect that one as well. All right, and now that everything is disconnected, we can go ahead and pull up our harness. All right, and now your harness will come out. All right, and then obviously if this was a stock truck, it would connect to the fuse block, which is somewhere in this area. I have the uh, fuse block ripped out so you guys can see it. I believe that there is a white plug and a black plug. We're gonna be pulling out the black one, which is gonna be on either one of these. So all you have to do is unscrew that. I believe it's seven millimeter or eight millimeter. And then the whole block will just pop out of the fuse block. You disconnect this, this one goes to the interior compartment of the truck, as well as there's a couple, you know, odds and ends here and there. But you disconnect those, and then basically your harness is free to go. The last thing you have to do is unbolt your PCU from its housing and your whole harness will come out with you. Except for we forgot one thing right here and that is our alternator. That one is just a 10 mil. We're just gonna unscrew that and then our harness is free. So now at this point you have your entire harness removed. You can start stripping it down, cutting it down and making it a standalone harness. Don't forget that your engine basically will not start at any point without reflashing that ECU now. Any standalone harness, you need to flash your ECU because there is a thing called VATS, V-A-T-S. That's the Vehicle Anti-Theft System. If you don't unprogram that from the computer, your engine will turn over. It'll start for like one or two seconds and then it'll immediately turn off. And so that's why you need to disable the VATS on the ECU. But yeah, so at this point you can clean up the harness, take out any unnecessary things. I will go ahead and link a video, which I believe is like the best one on YouTube to do that with. Personally, I'm not going to strip down this harness. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to be installing this. This was the cheapest wiring harness I could find on eBay. This is what we're going to be putting on the engine. Hopefully it works out for us. I'm going to be reviewing it for you guys in the next video. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. We're going to get this thing installed as soon as we can. And I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, if you need anything, you can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, my website, JuaniDanteGriego.com. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you later.